I'm Jess from What Culture, and you may know me from such videos as 10 Best Dark Souls Games That Aren't Dark Souls. Well, I hosted that one a little while ago, and then you guys weighed in saying, these games are not Dark Soulsy enough, so not to worry. We have a commenter edition just for you, and here we've collected your suggestions of games that you think are closer to being in the category of Dark Soulsy enough to be called Dark Souls games without being Dark Souls games. So yes, we went through all your comments, even the one from, now hold on, Jason Kickass 9418 which said second lol love your work guys yes I read all the way down there so hopefully we've got a list worthy of you now let's go I'm still Jess from what culture and here are the nine best Dark Souls games that aren't Dark Souls commenters edition number nine Asterogos Curse of the Stars this 2022 game from developer Acme Game Studio is more souls light than souls like so if that sounds interesting to you buckle in also, if it doesn't sound interesting to you, please stay anyway. I've got like eight more games to come. If you sometimes find Souls games inundating, but you still enjoy the level of challenge, slick combat mechanics, and plenty of skills with which you can customize your protagonist, Asteragos has what you're looking for. The game puts you in the shoes of Hilda, a fiery-haired woman who's all geared up to face intimidating bosses inspired by Greek and Roman mythology throughout the visually stunning city of Aphis. The narrative revolves around you trying to break the curse that has gripped your city. There are some gorgeous arenas, fantastic boss designs, and mimic chests, because you gotta have mimic chests. The overwhelming odds are in there just like in Souls games, as well as a recently added boss rush mode if you need an extra challenge. The lighter side of the experience means there are only 6 weapons available and 22 bosses to take down who won't give you nearly as much trouble as a Souls boss. Things are also a little easier going in that you don't lose experience when you die. And as I said, things are a little easier than its inspiration. So this is sort of a breezier iteration that still gives you the Souls vibe. It's also worth mentioning, this is the first release from the developer. So it's an impressive start and understandably a thinner experience. It's an especially great experience, particularly given the Taiwanese studio's relative infancy and tighter budget. Number eight, Remnant from the Ashes. Onto a game that was mentioned no less than 59 times in the comments of our last video, according to my expert research involving holding the control key and the F key at the same time, you guys wanted us to pipe up about Remnant from the Ashes, so you got it. Being that the 2019 Gunfire Games title is a shooter, you wouldn't initially think it falls neatly into the Souls-like category. But with bonfires, epic boss fights, classes, an upgrade mechanic for its many weapons, and a combat system that heavily incorporates and requires you to master and manage your stamina as well as dodging, it's basically Dark Souls, if you shot things way more. Remnant, or Shooty Souls as I'll be referring to it, also has you dying a hell of a lot, so don't worry, you'll be doing that just the same as you would in a Dark Souls game. That's not to underestimate the impressive mechanical quality and intriguing narrative of this game. With a well-earned 9 out of 10 on Steam, Remnant asks a lot of its players and delivers satisfaction back in spades for those who are up to the challenge. There's also a co-op mode that works really well as long as you want to get your ass beat with a friend. The Swamps of Courses DLC throws in a survival mode on top of the core game, while the Subject 2923 DLC gives you new locations to explore and nasty bosses to take out. The creatures you'll be taking on and hopefully taking out before they do the same to you have that classic design of messed upness, which is delightful in Souls games and equally delightful here, and you just can't understate the joy of taking out a big bad that's put you down over and over again. Number 7. Code Vein one of the surest games to qualify as a Souls-like is certainly Bandai Namco's 2019 action RPG Code Vein. The game isn't quite as refined as its inspiration, but if you're looking for something that steps outside of what you'd expect from a From Software game, but with all the same gameplay hooks and an intriguing gothic world, this one more than delivers. With a deep, though admittedly divisively wild narrative set in a sprawling game world, the game earned plenty of fans for its unique approach to combat and uncommon addition of an optional AI companion, who 60% of the time does what you want every time. I'm just playing, they're almost always a big help. Code Vein even has elements that are directly comparable to Souls Veins, like there's a fight against two bosses, which is a lot like the Ornstein and Smo conflict, and there's also an Anor Londo-esque location in the Cathedral of Sacred Blood. Code Vein doesn't only attain its cult status by taking inspiration from the Soulsborne format and iterating on it in interesting ways, even if not all those weights are an improvement, 
It also absolutely emulates the iconic Souls difficulty level. One of the places this is best experienced is in the Brutal Depths dungeons, which get harder as they go, capping out at the DLC dungeon Fiery Oblivion and one of its super challenging bosses, Hellfire Knight, who comes at you with quick and powerful attacks, not to mention 125,000 HP. From offering up an enticing world and rich lore to its fleshed out characters and incredible love letter to anime, which is completely shameless and completely delightful, you could do a lot worse than Bandai's response to FromSoft. Number six, Lies of P. One of the more recent games on this list, having released in September of 2023, NeoWiz Games and Round 8 Studios' Lies of P puts you in the shoes of a robotic Pinocchio with a regular sized nose. First, I think we should clear up the elephant in the room, which is really the where is the growing nose in the room. Not to worry, the portrait of a boy in Hotel Krat will depict your nose growing when you lie, and you can actually see it on your protagonist's shadow, even though it's not any longer on your face. All right, back to Souls. This is arguably one of the best Souls-esque experiences out there. As you'd expect from this point, the difficulty component is totally there, but Liza P also excels at crafting a compelling story, entertaining and intriguing enemies, and varied customization options for your weaponry. The world you have to explore is fascinating and sinister, and look, this will come as a surprise, it's beset by horrifying monsters. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a theme. Riddled with secrets buried in its stunning dark fantasy setting, it's easy to get lost in the game's style, tight combat, and unique narrative beats. It borrows a few elements very heavily from Souls games, arguably too heavily, but it also truly innovates on the genre in a lot of interesting ways, and every facet of this thing works so well, you really won't mind. Number 5. Salt and Sanctuary all right, we've given you shooty Dark Souls, Pinocchio Gothic Dark Souls, Greek Mythology Dark Souls, and Vampire Dark Souls. Time for 2D Dark Souls. Enter 2016 action RPG Salt and Sanctuary, made by Scar Studios. Well, I'm kind of disappointed there's no Scar elements because we're really missing a Scar Souls on this list. Enough of my tangent. In short, Salt and Sanctuary is as brutal, stylish, and wonderfully horrifying as it is visually compelling. The gripping, intense combat is backed by an awesome soundtrack that will have your heart pounding with every new David and Goliath encounter. There's an extensive stat and skill upgrade system and honestly just a whole swath of mechanics that are really shocking to have incorporated given this game was made by just two people. That said, I do have a complaint. There's a location called the Village of Smiles, which is very, very misleading. The story is surprisingly extensive. The world is littered with secrets. You can play in co-op and there are loads of playstyle options, items and weapons, not to mention various classes and origin choices. To call Salt and Sanctuary just a basic Souls-like is really doing it a disservice, as anyone who's played it would tell you. Thankfully, despite being criminally underrated, the game got a sequel that came out in 2022, which manages to hit the nail on the head just as well. Number 4. The Last Hero of Nostalgia since I've decided to go on a tangent of shorthanding these Souls-like games with silly Souls names, Over the Moon Studios has provided us with what I'm going to call Funny Souls. If that doesn't make any sense to you, basically this is Dark Souls if you injected lighthearted humor and a heavy dose of charm. While the humor doesn't hit for everyone and there are issues with the checkpointing and travel systems, The Last Hero of Nostalgia gives you a story worth experiencing, as well as a toned down stat system which doesn't inundate you, balance challenges and expanded features like puzzles, as well as the ability to remember weapons, letting you pull them forward to new areas and improve them. Also, you play as a headless stick figure, which if you've been watching the gameplay and don't understand why I haven't mentioned that yet, yeah, that's a thing. The game world that was built from video games is running out of memory, and as a result, everybody in it is out to get you. Somehow this game parodies FromSoft while emulating it in a way that is still produced a genuinely solid game. You can choose from various classes, get your hands on better equipment, and play in co-op, so all your classic Soulsy features are there, except it is giving we have Dark Souls at home. Also, this game has a character customization menu for you, but you're a stick figure, so even though there's all these different sliders, they don't do anything, so that's really funny. Here is some voiceover, so the editor of this video can show you the customization screen. See the endowment slider? That's funny. Has it been on screen long enough? Are you enjoying the B-roll? Okay, let's move on. Number 3. Jedi Fallen Order 
Star Wars Souls arrived in 2019 from seasoned developer Respawn Entertainment and divisive publisher EA. It basically said screw you to anyone who's played an easy Star Wars game in the past and threw you straight into the deep end of a galactic adventure. Fallen Order drops you into a Metroidvania-esque world filled with enemies to best, things to find and a story to unravel. Where the game really shines though is in its highly technical combat, which requires you to master parrying, blocking, sidestepping and dodging, while also being clever about when to unleash your force powers. This is an especially important one, as while these abilities can change the tide of your encounters if things are going awry, you only have a limited force meter and replenishing it requires you to land hits on your foe. The game lets you upgrade skills that fall into the categories of force, lightsaber and survival, and you'll want to choose carefully as the game offers up some serious challenges. Beyond the combat mechanics and inviting world, the Souls elements also come through in the wildly memorable boss battles that are going to give you a run for your money. From intensely rewarding exploration to the impactful sensation of combat and, let's face it, the ever-exciting world of Star Wars, Fallen Order really nailed it with fans, as did its 2023 sequel, Survivor. Number 2. Thymesia Hard to pronounce, Dark Souls, I'm sorry these titles are really going downhill, deserves better than for me to call it hard to pronounce, Dark Souls, because Thymesia, though it's one of the little Thymesia, I think it's Dimes, yep, is one of the little guys on this list. It excels in almost every way and presents an incredible Souls Light experience. Created by first-time developer Over Border Studio and published by Team 17, Thymesia is another action RPG that slides neatly into the Souls-like genre while still offering you something quite different than you get in a From Software game. The combat has a very high level of challenge and expects a lot of you, so you'll want to go in prepped for that. But the worst thing we can really say about it is it's fairly short, so it leaves you wanting more. Then again, when the rest of the genre threatens to gobble up hundreds of hours of your time, there's certainly room for a tighter, short and sweet Souls experience. The game gives you a cool cape and a plague mask and sends you on your way to help the world that's been beset by monsters and a terrifying plague. You know how these things go. Your protagonist Corvus can engage with a variety of different playstyles, plague weapons to wield, skills to obtain, and the addition of a raven form you can shapeshift into when the mood strikes. Naturally, Thymesia has a dramatically smaller budget, but if you want the vibe of Sekiro and Bloodborne with a variety of bosses to battle in a neat little package, it's all here for you. Number 1. Steel Rising Still rising surprise that don't stop at the fact that its name is two words strung together. Huh? It's also set during the French Revolution. And I know what you're thinking. This is the first game on this list that isn't going to be like a supernatural dark fantasy. It's actually set in the real world. Well, no. King Louis forces are made up of robots. There you go. The city of Paris is going through a bit of a totally on fire problem and is filled with powerful, agile and deadly mechanical soldiers who are all prepped to stomp you into dust. But before you say sacre bleu, I apologize for that, not to worry as you're also a deadly mechanical soldier, an automaton in fact, designed to protect the queen. As you'd now expect, all the iconic facets of Souls games are here. Super mobile, tight combat, a sprawling world with plenty of secrets that rewards exploration, and the flexibility to choose between a range of attack methods and fighting styles so you can play your way. The fleshed out historical setting, engaging core gameplay loop and challenging encounters make this a game that's hard to put down even when it's let down by its rough edges and poor optimization. The combat is flashy and visceral and the electric sound design makes everything feel extra weighty and tactile. Beyond that, the game has some stunning, albeit wild enemy designs that would be right at home in a Souls title. If you were just waiting this whole entry to hear what dumb name I would give this, I, I don't know why you would be, but just in case you were, let's go with French Souls. That one wasn't great. Let me know your suggestions down in that comment box. I obviously need them.